Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Friday, April 11th, 2025, and we're having an earthquake swarm down there by the Salton Sea along the southern section of the San Andreas Fault Zone. The recent earthquakes I got all marked out in green, not to be confused with the yellow, which was another earthquake swarm that happened back in 2023. And they were worried that event could trigger a large, uh, the big one. Today there was a magnitude 2.5 earthquake and they sent out a shake alert, warning people of the potential of a larger earthquake coming. Also today there was a magnitude 2.8. Um, this was in fact a thrust earthquake. Now what's a thrust earthquake and why do I talk about them so much and what makes them so dangerous? I have a video here explaining this and you can see the fault line in the middle. I'll hit play and it's where one fault rises up sometimes over the other fault and then the fault line sometimes spreads. Let me play this again and I'll pause it. You can see we've got one side rising up and then we got spreading that happens. Sometimes the fault will move laterally with each other. Let me pause this again. Let me go back to um, Google Earth here. I marked out, um, let's see, we got the 2.7. That's where the shake alert recently went out. We also have a magnitude 3.1. That was one of the larger earthquakes. But there was also another 3.1 that was a thrust earthquake. Uh, that occurred yesterday. And then we got, let's see, another shake alert. Um, that went out that was a magnitude 2.5 back in 2023 they were worried that this earthquake swarm uh, would trigger a bigger event along the San Andreas fault the reason researchers said it was because the quake swarm happened below the southern tip of the San Andreas fault in an area that has not produced any large earthquakes since 1680 so do you think that might be an incentive to be more prepared for something larger coming? They say that back then that the odds of a magnitude 7 quake or larger happening in this area was as high as 1 in, in 100. That paper was published on June 7, 2023 in the journal Nature. It showed that for the last 1,000 years, major earthquakes emulating from the southern southern San Andreas Fault have coincided with periods um, when the basin that holds the Salton Sea fills with water. and But the problem is uh, it's drying up. So during this time, and unless you're having a lot of rains, I don't know what is triggering this earthquake swarm. Normally you would have an increased water that would put pressure on the crust of the earth that would cause these earthquakes. Have you been getting a deluge of rain recently? So when the basin fills up, you not only have the pressure of that water pressing, pressing on the crust of the earth, but it would also act as a lubricant for, for the fault. The San Andreas Fault is roughly about 800 miles long. It's an actual fracture in the earth. You know, you can see it from, from the air. It's where the Pacific plate and the North American tectonic plates meet. The two plates are slowly sliding by one another horizontally at a rate of almost two inches a year on average. That is a lot of movement. The Pacific plate on the west side of the fault is moving roughly northwest and the North American plate on the east side is sliding southeast. The researchers said that for the last 1,000 years or so, the southern San Andreas Fault went about every 180 years between major earthquakes. But it's now been more than 300 years since a major earthquake. They described the southern San Andreas Fault as being about 10 months pregnant. And that's pretty ominous. 
They said it's locked and loaded for a big shake that could cause an estimated 1,800 deaths and about $200 billion in damage if it had a magnitude 7.8. Yeah, three shake alerts sent out. And let me show you something. There's been 38 earthquakes within this location. And it goes all the way back until um, the 6th of this month. The first one being a 1.8. The largest ones were a 2.4. That was 3.1 kilometers or 1.9 miles in depth. Yeah, in the middle of a lake. We also have a 2.7 right in the middle of the cluster. That was shallow also. 1.5 miles in depth. Let's see, we got another 2.5. That was yesterday. 1.8 miles in depth. And let me bring this up. Okay, there's the 3.1. 1.7 miles in depth. Another 2.5. 1.3 miles in depth. And I don't have this one on my map because it just recently happened. That could be what they call an orphan quake. Yeah, away from the, the cluster that's currently happening, the swarm. So, what are your thoughts? Does this give you some incentive to get a little bit more prepared? Yeah, um, I hope so. So, what are your thoughts? Please put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.